spent so much time editing this, now my hair has gone straight. Hello, I'm an OC mapper. OC beat maps. You play them, we make them, you hate them, we hate you, we agree about them a lot. So what is that we want? Are there things that we agree on? Can we share our perspectives to one another? I interviewed both players and mappers during Gabo's OC event to get some of these answers. The questions I have here are pretty scattershot mapping questions. I'm saying this because I'm not confident. <laughs> and there are likely better questions that didn't ask, like how could player opinions be integrated into the ranking process? And oh my god, that's a very good question. So if you've got any mapping related questions, feel free to comment them. Maybe I'll make a better interview next year. Or maybe I won't. I haven't decided to go to TLE next year yet. Make your own interview if you want. I don't care. Spark some healthy discussions. Alright, let's go. In your opinion, what makes a map good? Good gameplay. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Just, uh, I think the most important thing is how fun the map is. It doesn't have to be like cleanly mapped or whatever, I just need to have fun playing because that's what the game is about for me. If it's not fun, then where's the point? If it flows really well, personally that's for me a big plus. You are so tall. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. I mean maps I like usually like in control kind of stuff. High star rating, also very like gimmicky maps I enjoy a lot, low AR. Those are personally my favorite kinds of maps. One, it should represent a song. Also, kind of map so that the players have fun playing it. You need to give the players some fair chance to play the map. If there's like unfair elements like over mapping, for example, and having big spikes, it can ruin the play experience. I can like a map because it looks good in the editor, or I can like a map because it plays well. Very few maps manage to actually do both. One, I like actually just want to sit down and play OC. Most of the time, I just like play random slop that is genuine garbage. I will have fun with those maps as well. There needs to be something that's being committed to. If you're gonna make a map, what is the idea behind that map? Mapping is like an art form. You can't just go in and just place objects all over the place. I think the thing that makes a good map is when you have an idea and you're consistent and you try your best to execute it as well as you can. It doesn't have to be, you know, best map ever played, but like, you know, if you're committing to what you're doing, you're gonna make a good map. I make maps for players, not like TV farm stuff, but like for playability and gameplay concepts. In my opinion, I really like the maps who like take care to like give hints to players or like subtle stuff that makes the map play less annoying or awkwardly. Because there's a lot of maps out there that try and go for one thing, but ends up getting blocked by like a bunch of other skill sets that weren't intended. Whether I like to play it or not. I know it sounds very stupid, but I do value gameplay above a lot of other things. If I like to play the map, then I think it's good. It's very simple. I don't really have a specific thing of like, if you do this type of movement, I like your map. I don't really have that. Of course, there is a certain level of aesthetics and song representation I still do expect. So not like the Grand Senpai map stuff that I see on Twitter. If it's like just a fun jump map, I can appreciate that a lot. I think when you can really connect to the song on any sort of level, as a player you feel some kind of engagement and connection to the song with how intense or impactful it feels. So the closer I can feel to connect to the song rather than like how epic the map is itself, that to me is what makes a map like really good. I think a map is a level in a rhythm game. A map is good if it one, represents the song, two, explores an interesting gameplay idea that works in a rhythm game. An interesting idea doesn't need to be complex. It can be a very simple idea, but a very generic idea. What makes a map good is kind of a balance of two things. One is how fun is it mechanically to play? How interesting is the map from a gameplay perspective? And the other one is how well it kind of melds with the song. I want to know from the map alone, potentially, what a mapper sees in the song. All mappers map the same song in different ways. I want the map to be so clear and so intentional that I can almost read the mind of the mapper making the map. The map should be flavor. It should give someone the dopamine, like a tech map should be like special, that is like memorizable. And a jump map should be like, it's not even PP anymore, there should be like more bursts. Hello there! For me it's just like whether or not I like it, but I think that's because a lot of my tastes have been curated by what other mappers also consider good. It's kind of a circular question. I've been an NAD, right? So I have like that kind of ju judgment and that relies mainly like, is there enough variety, is there enough contrast, is there enough cohesion and structure? And does it kind of remotely fit the intensity of the song? Those are the three criteria. Then like for myself, it's like, I also add like the creativity aspects, like what ideas are there and how do they build on those? I tend to go like for very all round maps in, if I'm like judging very personally. I think it's just nominations because like, <laughs> If you get the ends, your map is good, isn't it? Okay. A bubble. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a long-running joke. Um, oh, okay. For yeah, I think it's good is when it's fun to play multiple times. You play it 
for fun more than like a one-time thing. Are there any maps or types of maps that you enjoy that nobody else seems to? I think generally the maps I like are widely loved. I generally love all the maps from like 2016 and like the old maps that everyone still plays now in those farm maps. I don't think so. I feel like everyone enjoys their stuff and there's nothing that everyone hates that I like. It's preference, no? Maybe back in the day I'd have a better answer to this, but right now, not particularly, no. I feel like they're pretty well enjoyed by other people. You know, like there's a lot of controversial maps that people hate on all the time. I don't really care that much for them. I quite enjoy farm maps for fun rather than for farm. I mean, I did used to farm them a lot. Ew. Don't get me wrong, but I was a professional farmer. But I still find them fun to play. I think for most people, when they play farm maps, it's not because they're fun, it's because they're trying to gain rank. But like, I genuinely will boot up horrible kids and have a good time. Like, I'll spend half an hour playing Horrible Kids with DT Flashlight. Like, I'll enjoy that. Farm maps can be their own sort of enjoyed experience. They just have been designed in a way that fits the matter. I do like farm maps, like the cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an old one. How do you find that? I think people hate it because they play it over and over and over and over again. But I just find it so silly that I really enjoy it, no matter how much I play it. Good low diffs, because no one else plays them. That's why. <laughs> It's usually old maps because old maps are like naturally low in star rating. But I really, really care about a map being really fun to play at low star rating. From a mapping perspective, it could be really good because I can see the ideas, I can see the gameplay, I can see the mapper like really wanted to do something in this map and I can be drawn in by that design. Compared to mappers, I love Zappy and Snownote a lot. I really love their maps a lot because they're so simple. I value simplicity a lot. I don't like the overly complicated slider stuff because I don't like to, when I play a map, I don't want to think. I do enjoy playing bizarre maps, like things that people don't usually do that are like unique. If you make something underrated, it's probably like the song because it's like not recognizable, but the map could be like really good. I know one now, it's Pino Radiant, the tech map. I really like it. Probably tech maps. Honestly, 90% of other players are sadly not that interested in playing tech, and only like a small percentage of players are actually very interested in going and playing Capo maps, Halgo maps, maps like that. There's a few mappers that I got introduced to by a, a bunch of my friends who are in this like mapper group. Have you heard of Hamano Masuji? I enjoy his maps a lot. Meow username is also a pretty underground mapper that I enjoy a lot. All of them making these kinds of like weird spider in control kind of stuff again. Defining what other people enjoy is the hard part here. I really like symmetry maps. My favorite mappers include like Saten, Parachute, Starod Kirby 86, that, those kinds of mappers. I really like maps like that. Symmetrical object placement makes for some really interesting reading since you can infer object placement. So you can see an object on one side of the screen, you can assume it will be on the other as well. You don't have to focus as much. I like land wings, maps with very few slider velocity changes, but still maps that utilize slider mechanics. Contrast between slow aim and fast aim that land wings uses in maps like Hades in the Heaven. I think it takes more skill to work within that limitation of not changing the slider velocity that much. A Chinese map because like they have a lot of different reason choices and I enjoy them, but it seems like not many people enjoy this nowadays. I'm a gimmick player. <laughs> I don't know how well received Notch Hellas were players. When it was ranked, people were obviously not happy with it. I really love those gameplay maps that focus on a certain aspect of the game. Notch Hell is such a good slider map. It does it so well, and you're really not gated by anything else except for the sliders. Like, there's still the harder parts, like the alternating parts. The main gimmick in the sliders is the hardest part of the map, so it stands out really well, and it's just so fun to try and figure out how to move around and stuff. Well, I like Rendezvous a lot. That's like one of my, that's like one of my favorite maps. It really showed me like how fun an insane diff can be if you like make good use of the play field. I started off really liking Pretty. Nowadays it's called Avena. Now that it's not active, I've known a lot of people seem to remember his maps even though they're a lot of fun. Actually, I have a really good answer for that. I like playing Shitan, the, or the original one. What year the mapping peak? I don't fucking know, man. No fucking clue. This is the problem. I don't, when I play maps, I don't keep track of when they were made. So I literally have no idea when mapping peaked. I guarantee that everyone will have a different answer and the answer will be based on when they were doing the most mapping or playing. I can say, oh, I think it peaked in 2020 because that's when I was having the most fun playing because I was improving a lot. But like, that doesn't mean anything. The year I started mapping, 2014, obviously. <laughs> it's how it is for everyone. I think that's the way generally everyone will answer. Like no one's gonna say like the best mapping year is today. Actually, maybe I don't know what other people are saying. What do you think? What's been going on with other people's answers on this? 2011. 
Damn. I wouldn't say that modern maps are bad or that mapping has gotten worse since then. It's just that that's when mapping got to the peak and it's just kind of stayed there. Everything was kind of figured out back then. Like obviously the mean quality of maps has gone up because people have gradually gotten better. The ranking criteria has sort of improved. There's a lot of stinkers from back then, but then again, there's a lot of stinkers these days as well. But when we're talking about the peaks, that's when let's just cry for eternity, uh, Landwings, Hades, and the Heaven, that's sort of 2011, 2012 era, where everything was kind of figured out. So I wouldn't say mapping has gotten down from the peak. Shoutouts to LC, Lestra, Landwings, who just figured it out. That's very difficult for me, because like, I, I don't really keep track of the years that way. I'm like, I'm not uh, tuned into eras as much. as uh, If I would really say it's just like early 2012, 2013, when the uh, Star Wars Kirby maps, <laughs> that mapping peaked and then it slowly fell off because nobody beat the goats. <laughs> something around 2014 because at 2014 you get like this kind of old members i love like chinese members doing stuff and meanwhile you also get like kind of the new generations like rlc who is also trying some very experimental stuff that's very good to play as well so i think it's a very interesting year that you get all these things people that are doing things for fun for experiments the peak year for me is not like the map skew or something that's at the cherry of the top i would love to see people enjoy their mapping instead of like being forced because of any excellent reasons. Oh, that's a really hard one. I mean, I've been playing since 2014, so I've had a fair share of eras behind me, I guess. 2015? Yeah. 2015 ish like that's the stuff i enjoy playing the most because i like playing bms maps or like galvanized stuff which is really fun to me or just like bnb mapping which also peaked around 2016 with robox 2016 was where people really had fun and were doing things not for like straight pp or like a number value or attention it just kind of felt like hey this is cool this is fun let me do that yeah i miss those times 2017 okay. because that was the hardest drama with all the airy versus UC stuff, that was funny as fuck. I got into the game 2018. 2019 was still fine. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on, and I like 2019. Favorite years, probably around 2017 to 2019. I enjoyed the game most then, I don't know why exactly. If I had to say something, I guess maps were simpler back then. It's easier to get into stuff. There were a lot of introductionary maps into different skill sets, and it was easy to find them too. But now it's really hard to find stuff like that, so it's hard to like get into different skill sets, I guess. I'm always gonna like gravitate to say the current year. There are still more maps to come, and a lot of the maps that have already joined out are pretty cool. I, I can't even tell you what will happen in the next month that will make this year better than the next, which is kind of the fun part, right? Today. It, yes, I don't think there has ever been a time where the best mappers have been better than today. There's always re evolving and it, obviously stuff is controversial, but I think maps are getting so much more complex. The songs that are getting mapped are getting more complex and it's awesome. Is this going to be a bit weird? I think mapping peaked last year. Not specifically last year, but at least like over like the last three years. Even though the bottom of the ranking standards have dropped, because so many more mappers are in the game, and because the number of BNs is still stationary, it means that the average quality of a ranked map is just increasing, increasing. Not because the minimum standard is increasing, but because so many maps are being made by so many new people who are so much more talented than I am, that like, they end up getting ranked, and it means the average rank section is actually pretty good. All the maps are relatively unique. They're by people who may have just have one ranked map, and for some reason that ranked map is fucking insane. So that's why I think the past three years has been crazy. Mind Master is a true thinker. Five. Respect. How do you look for new maps to download? I refresh the profile page of my favorite mappers <laughs> and click download. I just look at like like recent uh, ranked maps and I look about what my friends are playing and like seeing if it's like enjoyable. I look the qualified section and I just download songs I recognize or anything out of my skill range so I can push myself. Sometimes I look at other beatmaps that people send to me. I can look at them and I just give them like the feedback. I download maps for laser videos and so they're always featured artist maps. So any featured artist map, I click on it basically. Otherwise, I filter by English and rock because if I'm playing the game, it doesn't happen very often, but generally that's what I want to listen to. Honestly, I haven't downloaded that many maps since like 2021, but I usually just go based on song choice, to be honest. It's heavy song bias or just mappers that I liked before. If I see a snow node map, I will instantly download that, for example. Either I just go on Osu PPs, like I said, and look what I can play for the PP that I want. I found some gems on there, like you can go on the website and then just enter what you're searching for, how many stars, what mods you 
you can play and whatnot, and it'll give you decent maps in my opinion. Other times I just sort by ranked on the website, like at the last ranked ones. I look if there are any songs that interest me or any melodies that I like. I go to my friends' profiles, check their favorites, and then I go onto the mappers and check their favorites, and I continue to cycle until I've downloaded lots of maps. Nice, nice. Because I'm a map pooler, I like to go to other tournaments and see what other map poolers pool. For example, players like Yorkspy are very into niche maps. You can just scavenge through their pools and find a lot of awesome maps that I would normally just not find. For the stuff that I play, like tech for example, I know mappers like Mega. Fan, I would just go into their profile and look for maps. But for other niches, I go to players like Yorkspy, Marco, that just know other stuff that I can't find. Well, very often it's like I'll see like a map that gets attention, or I'm doing mentee evals or mentorship, or looking at mentors that I applied. Very often I will get maps, it's just like someone else posts a map and I see it. I don't very often go to like the rank beat map listing to find anything anymore. I don't. I play tournaments. Fair enough. I don't anymore, I'm sorry. Occasionally I search up Toho and just download them because of the song. I've regressed to just looking up math based on songs uh, or like where it's from now instead of caring about if the map's good or not. I don't. That's the thing. I already have 70,000 maps. I don't really need to look for maps. Most of the maps that I download are either because they're in a tournament pool or because someone sent it to me and that's how I find my maps. Or if there's a new song I found and I want to go see if there's any maps of it. Discord, people send me maps, they ping me, I play them. Uh, I don't usually look at the right section. If other people send me them. Uh, I don't look for maps myself anymore because I used to just sometimes go through qualified and sometimes I see on the home page in the new ranked stuff, I see a song that I like and then I download it from there and otherwise I just wait for people to send me it. It's kind of running a theme that my first is don't look for new maps, it's just all requests. Yeah, because most of the time I am too lazy to do so, right? So I guess these days it's more like whatever maps I'm nominating at this point. <laughs> or even things like in uh, my modding queue, I end up seeing a bunch of maps where I'm like, I'm gonna reject this, but this is going to find two different DMs and probably get ranked. So I end up seeing a lot of things before they get pushed, rather than after they're pushed. I usually just like find maps in my BN log, for example, I'll just get them. Because usually I don't proactively find maps because I don't usually play them. If there's someone submit their map, where I'm open, I'll just look at it. If someone wants me to give feedback, sometimes I'll give them, sometimes I'll not. So I think that's just how I find maps to download. Sometimes I'll find my favorite artists also, and if I heard that if they got ranked at some point, I've also probably got a loop as well. I don't. <laughs> I would say most of the maps I kind of get nowadays, I get from when people request me them, and then if they like send it in a stream or something, I'll see it, or if there's drama on it, then I'll see it. Fine. Just a mapper slash nominator brain. We don't look for a new map. Do you think low dips or full spread should be required for ranking? I don't think so. You can just like make one div and that should be enough. No, no, of course, no, not even close. All right, top player. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I personally say no. If somebody doesn't want to bother with making a full set, then they don't have to. No, not really. It could be good for like new players, but it, it, it shouldn't be like a full on requirement. Are you hovering around like insane dips? I'm trying my best. <laughs> That's all right, everything gets there. I don't know if it's more or less work for BNs. They have a lot of work, so if it's less work to actually only rank one map and mod one map, then I guess it should be down to the BNs and NAT to decide. It's not really something I think that players should decide. In the past, I did think that. Having full spreads or, you know, lower length songs, that's what new players want to play. But nowadays, due to the sheer number of maps that exist in the rank section and with featured artists. In Laser, when you have download maps, by default, featured artists are selected. You could introduce maybe some kind of ranked approved separation like you did in the past with only featured artist maps being ranked and everything else being approved, and then ranked maps requiring full spreads and approved maps not requiring full spreads. There will be an incentive to make those maps since that's what is given to new players so they get more visibility. I wish they weren't. I do believe there's a bit of backwards logic of strive for quality all the time and then we kind of enforce these diffs that people don't actually want to make. So it's like a backwards logic. But on the same point, you do need to have low diffs for players. I just wish that there was a different way of achieving that. I'm going to be fully honest. I don't remember the last time I actually looked at the diff below four stars in my life. I've made like few GDs that were like low starting before. I just like made them in like 30 minutes just to like fucking have it in there. I don't think I've actually played a two star map since like 2016 maybe. So I, I think they're stupid, it's a dumb requirement. 
for a very long time I felt that way because like nobody really wants to make low diffs. But I also wouldn't be surprised if you remove the requirement that people would like still go out on their own initiative and make content specifically cater to lower ranked players, especially since the community is so big, like we have over a million users, right? So that's a large audience to make maps for. I think that's very appealing still. I don't think they should be required per se, but it would be nice if there was an initiative that would then go with the removal of that requirement. I do think so, because especially for me, pretty new player, I like when there's a lot of variety, especially for low uh, maps, because when new players try to get started with the game and they don't have maps on songs they like or on songs everyone else is playing, it might be difficult for them to also enjoy the game. I have no issues with the current ranking criteria when it comes to length. Longer maps don't need lower diffs, while shorter maps are fine to have lower diffs. You can still have lower diffs for a longer map as well. I think it's a good balance right now. Absolutely. Especially on shorter songs. The longer the song, the the more I disagree and there are just some songs that should not have lower difficulties for instance I had to make an insane difficulty for Shinbatsu the 250 ppm ICDD song that was actual horror nightmare that map is ass I can say that very confidently but like most anime songs for instance like if you're mapping a TV size anime just go full spread bro like let the most amount of people enjoy the map set instead of gatekeeping of course they should. I think with longer sets, maybe not, but of course, when you have like those two minute, three minute, even TV size, I think low diffs are pretty natural. Especially when you talk about stuff that it's like really prominent songs. A lot of new players are gonna gravitate towards those lower diffs. I understand why people don't want to, when it's like three and a half minutes, they really don't want to crank out a normal or a hard, or even an easy if they're doing mapper skill stuff sometimes. It's just something that is less about the now and more about the future. When, if a set eventually, you know, does well, and you know, people really do like that song, it can be a bit boring. If newer players they don't have access to that normal or hard to play into so they just end up moving on other things not gonna lie yes uh even the current incredibly low bar of low diffs is still better than nothing by virtue of players don't really care that much about quality anyways it's surprisingly impactful if you just look at the play counts for almost every single popular map the hard diff and the insane diff is usually the most played. I can agree with mappers not caring that much about it. Some mappers do, like I, and, and I want to make good like low diffs, but I still think that they should be there. I know that hard diffs get played the most because players just get into it. A lot of six digits, seven digits, they also play the game. So I believe at least normal and hard diff should be required because they want to get into the game. Yes, because they wouldn't be made otherwise. There are people who probably do enjoy ranking low diffs, but there's not enough people. If we didn't force it, then new players would be completely scared of playing the game because there won't be anything for them to play. For the survival of the game, yes. There could potentially be other ways to achieve the same goal. Like, if there was a way for new players to specifically find certain maps around their skill level that were meant for people developing skill to become better, then you might not need low difficulties as much because a lot of the reason for low difficulties is to give people a way to engage with the game at a level that's fitting for them. A lot of the problem comes from people at that level want more song variety than people at the higher level. So it is kind of obligatory for like someone who's new to the game just searches up a song. They want something that's a low difficulty where Whereas someone who's experienced, they don't care as much. They'll be willing to play like a six star genre that they don't really care about. Do you think drama is good for the mapping scene? Do you think it forces change? No, it's cringe and boring. <laughs> no, I think it's unnecessary and I think that people always go overboard doing drama. I think it's very unhealthy for the community. I'd rather people be friendly. Drama is the worst thing ever, man. If I see drama, I would see like nonsense and I would need to build up my own thoughts. Drama is like negativity spreading to everyone, but it's not helped for the person. I think that the drama doesn't actually do absolutely anything. I've seen the exact same rehash drama almost like it's on a cycle like every two years by like slightly different people. The player versus mapping stuff, the us versus them argument never ends. It's been like that always. And I don't think the drama is ever going to solve it. It depends on the drama. I feel like a lot of drama gets really personal and strays away from mapping. If it was solely about mapping, I don't think it would be an issue. But I feel like a lot of times on Twitter, instead of insulting someone's maps, it starts becoming insulting someone as a person. That's when we're strafing away from where it's supposed to be. Because drama is basically active discussion. Uh, if you just keep it to the actual maps instead of the mappers, I think it would be fine. Depends on the drama. <laughs> It becomes drama because people get angry. Realistically, what 
is healthy is discussion and sharing of opinions and understanding what is causing people to be like getting angry about things. Drama is discussion where people have very strong opinions and are angry about them. A part of that drama is necessary, like people need to discuss, you know, why do we think this map should or shouldn't be ranked? Why is this pattern bad or stuff like that? It needs to be discussed because otherwise you'll get nowhere and you'll end up with a ranked section that's just kind of whatever. The problem is the drama, it's when people start getting angry about things and don't know how to have a civil discussion. Unfortunately, the player base average age is like 16. It's not that surprising. Teenagers are quite prone to emotions getting heightened. But I think in the mapping scene particularly, people are on the older side just because mapping takes a lot of time to, you know, get into the flow of things. And so I think a lot of the drama mostly comes from players who are angry about things that don't, they don't really understand that well, to be honest. I don't think drama itself is a good form to forcing the mapping things to change, but I do think the way that you treat a drama is very important. I think especially for the team behind the mapping scene, for example, like NATs should sometimes also take drama into account and to see if there are any like valid reasons behind it. I do think the way sometimes drama escalates is not the optimal, but yes, I think sometimes we should just learn. For example, I think the reason NAT changes or like how to handle evils is definitely ignited by the no drama combination. I would say it's not very wholesome like from here and there because it kind of get escalated at some point but it did force something to change so I think we just need to change our way to look at it. Does it force change? I don't think so, truthfully. Because there's always drama and it's always the same drama over and over again every few years and it changes but it's always kind of the same thing. People with different opinions end up kind of going and changing things slowly but I don't think a single map sets drama actually will cause change. I think saying good is kind of weird because that means like it's out of the an overall positive effect even though like overall it tends to like deteriorate people mindsets and cause a lot of like grudges to build up slowly over time but i do think the discussion aspect is worthwhile and can eventually like gradually make change good might not be the right way but i think it's more like it's nice to see people talking about it if everyone was complacent about how everything works it wouldn't be what mapping is because mapping has always been about opinions being shared or spread throughout a community and building the game based on those opinions. If there was no communication through the drama that I assume you're talking about, then the game wouldn't be what it is. Does it force change? Sometimes, but it's not like guaranteed to lead to change situation. It's more like it's just part of the cycle of mapping stuff. And whether it leads to change or not is not related necessarily. It's a bit of a wake-up call sometimes to see like what people are enjoying and what people aren't enjoying or if something's like heavily contesting the mapping meta that people are getting sick of so it hurts. Or like the PP aim thing of 2018, like there was just too so much of it. It can be a good wake-up call sometimes, but like it's a double-edged sword, there's a lot of unnecessary drama as well. It's kind of neutral for me at the moment. Probably it can cause good change, for example Hollow Wings implementing new ways to map. It was very controversial at the beginning, but now it's like considered as also history. But sometimes I think that it can also lead to bad things. I think drama in some way is probably good. Criticism that good for the mapper, it's probably a good thing, but where it's just people shitting on stuff, it's not really helping the community and neither helping mappers. Drama can be helpful, but isn't necessarily. I wish mapping drama was done a lot more maturely, but on a basic level, yes. You kind of need to complain in order for things to change. I think things have been gotten a lot better than a few years ago. I just wish it wasn't as immature or as Twitterfied. you know what I mean? <laughs> drama in general is just a buildup of emotions that explodes. With drama, so there's often a big disagreement, and of course I will be on one or the other side of that disagreement. Drama as a driving force for change is effective because a big splash will invoke that change a lot more effectively than someone making a boring 30-page proposal in some ranking section forum, which no one reads. Which, even though I like the latter option more, drama is an effective driver for change. Circles or slider? Uh, I think it's circles. 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 It forces you as a mapper to think about movement a lot more. They're, of course, both tools, so it depends how you use them. Spinners are great, too. Spinners are nice, but... <laughs> circles. <laughs> circles. Sliders. I'd say circles. Circle only. And only circle only. No spinners. No spinners. Sir, spinners suck, my dude. Spiders. Spiders. It's like comparing apples and oranges. It's kind of it's completely on, on, you know, there's not really, that's not really a, a question. I, I don't know. Well, yeah, there's one thing. One. Yeah. I know I have to pick one, but I'm not going to. Because right. a circle is a circle, a slider is a slider. They do different things. Sliders for sure, because sliders 
There's just so much more you can do with planners and circles. Circles. People need to make more cool circle patterns. Hell yeah. Circles. Circles can be more versatile, but sliders at the end of the day are going to convey a lot more ideas than circles can. Because sliders can be reverses, sliders can be funky, they can convey movement that circles can't convey. Because circles can either be snappy or flowy, and sliders can be both. I'm always going to have a preference towards sliders, but I do, I do respect a lot of, like, for example, like the Net Zero Oni maps that are only circles. I do have a lot of respect for very flow circle ideas. Sliders. Circles. I'm a circle guy. Fangin Sun or Halloween Slaughter? Fangin Sun. Fair enough. Halloween. Oh. Halloween Slaughter. That is incredibly hard because China is by far my favorite mapping country. Exactly. Uh, you know, Fangin and Halloween's, of course, YF, Rust Spell. Oh my god, I love them. I'd have to go with Halloween's Daughter. If it had to be uh, Hollowing's daughter, if I must HRT to, be, to, to do that, then yes. Bro, Hollowing's, good shit. Uh, fun gen, close second, but Hollowing's. With a Hollowing's daughter, you might have like free insurance or something, or like if you get into an accident, that would be kind of cool to have. She is a daughter. Exactly. I actually like fans and more. I think I'm a, a fan gen fan, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. But like, that, like, I enjoy both of their mapping styles a lot. Like, they are very fun. Some of my favorite maps, to be honest. Hansen because I've talked to Hansen. I think I'll take the Halloween daughter because I don't want like relations with my son. Twitter has always made it so much harder for fans and son. I have to say fans and son. Halloween. Fans and Halloween. Oh my god. Fuck you. <laughs> fans and okay. uh, fans and son. But oh my god, that's what a hard question. It's so close, man. Uh, Why we do this? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm the abortion. I'm the abortion. <laughs> abortion. Let me say I got had a uh, similar answer, so you know what's sure. <laughs> How do you balance copying inspiration versus applying your own ideas? When I see a pattern that someone uses, whatever is in my head after seeing that is my own interpretation of that pattern. It is not going to be the same as how the original mapper used that. I don't think copying exists in that way. I get an inspiration for some kind of mapper. I won't really look to copying them one by one. I just like browse some of the maps that I probably want to steal ideas with and I just have an idea in my mind that like if I want to imitate it, I was like I'll see it and like okay this is how this map looks like this is this and uh, just trying to not look at this again and trying to do the same way but in my way I don't know how to say it better in my mind I'll just like kind of do what it tried to do but not exactly I think I'm a weird case where I copy so many people that it's just this huge mishmash of everything I don't really have a balance it's more what I remember in the heat of the moment when I'm placing an object that's kind of just what gets implemented if I copy from multiple mappers at the same time then that in itself is original because I've decided that combination of ideas work good because it's three completely different mapping sort of perspectives I have to somehow force them together and that's the creativity part it's like learning you look at things that are like interesting to you try their concepts like once out and then you try the next one and it wouldn't be like copying anymore you take it from like more than five people so you can't call it copying anymore getting inspired by mappers you, you kind of do it by just viewing slash playing their maps repeatedly enough to recognize the ideas that are in there but it's not going to necessarily be full-on copying because the way that you think about things is going to be different than the way anyone else thinks about things just because humans are inherently different in how they think you're never going to really create an exact copy of someone's style you're going to create a version that uses similar elements but also uses your own elements because there's no way to fully recreate someone else's style unless you're in their mind you can make a cool map by merging two styles though, or merging infinite styles because that's how mapping ideas spread throughout maps by mostly applying my own ideas it's just like i've done a lot of like copying styles like when i started off mapping for Corsairs in 2020 and 2019 but i was always focused on trying to do it in my own way rather than being a real copy it's like i always had the priority myself it's not really a balance i just do my own shit based on other people's ideas we love your Corsairs 2020 nm1 i don't think that was copied from anyone it was just me throwing shit at the window and see if it sticks and i know a lot of it stuck i literally copy paste patterns from mappers i like the thing is, it, it depends on the context of where you put those patterns in, right? Okay. For instance, everybody has stolen a Skystar, a Skystar pattern in their days, right? Like, 
Let, let's be real here. Everybody's done that. Everybody did. It all depends. Like, I don't literally, like, go to the map, copy the code, and then put it in ah, my yeah. map, right? Sometimes other people just come up with such good patterns that I'm like, man, I want to use that on this. I do it on different songs. And then, of course, it's in it's in my style-ish. It still looks and feels different because the context around it is different. And sometimes songs are just so similar. Why not just use an idea that was already good? Most of the time, you're going to be looking at maps that tickling your fancy. And I believe that part of applying your own ideas is applying what they understood in a way that is different in context. So like a lot of times I would say Inspo Wing is weird to describe it. I would just say like applying what you think is good and then applying what you think you haven't seen before. I can't really answer that question without really saying that Inspo Wing is natural and your own ideas are going to be a lot more rare in comparison. You're always just going to be doing things that you think are your own ideas and how much of that is Inspo you can only find after this fact. You've probably seen my Kirby mix copies. Oh yeah. yeah. So obviously a lot of inspiration from Star Wars Kirby himself. Kirby. Yeah, Kirby. I'm mostly thinking of like keeping it symmetrical and having grid snap on. Other than that, it's just like trying to make fun patterns inside of my own volition. There may be some parts that are inspired. One map where I was inspired by the slider jumps in the uh, Switch on Lotus. Usually I just try and make the stream shape stuff on my own. So there's like the general idea and then anything else within that idea, I try and do myself. What makes mapping fun for you? Working within limitations. All of my all of my maps tend to have quite strict object placement rules. And they might really only be like a very simple thing that only I notice. A recent ranked map of mine uses a very simple concept of half beat stacks being 10 coordinates diagonally down. That's it. The rest of the map kind of builds on that. Working around that that kind of limitation and figuring out like, okay, how do I use this idea in different and interesting ways? Mapping is a pretty restrictive medium. You only have circles and sliders and you can only do so many things. So restricting that even more and trying to just get the most out of a very simple idea is very rewarding. It is very fun to take the memories of the past and remake them. I find it very fun. And then seeing the reaction of people as I do that and like the shared experience of like, hey, this is a fun throwback kind of thing makes it really fun for me. I like the music. I just say the objects and I get fun listening to the song. And if I don't like the song, I just try to do something stands out. That's like most fun thing for me. It's got to be the process. I can't really talk about mapping while I'm talking about enjoying the process more than the end result. Being able to enjoy like the process of mapping, going out, placing circles, trying to like rationalize how a map will function, uh, test playing it, enjoying the medium of creation rather than necessarily like the end product is what makes mapping enjoyable for me. It's cool to envision the end product. Like this map will look so fucking sick when someone plays it. I'm gonna make players fucking cry or all those like thought processes. But I'd say. When when it comes down to it, I enjoy just sitting there in shit posting while mapping. That, that, that's what I enjoy the most. It's a way different way of interacting with music. And that's why I like it a lot. Because of course playing instruments, writing songs, song composing, all that stuff, that all exists with music. But I just think uh, mapping in, is very, very special in a way where you can express your own feelings in a very different way because you can express it through different movements, different rhythms, and just the general feel that you get from a song, you can like translate that into a map. And I think that's fucking dope. Pac-Man 1 and 2 Pac-Man 3, right? Exploring the game concepts for me. Artistic value is cool and I appreciate mappers that do that, but I don't really care. I just want to make maps that I find fun, that I want to play, and that I think other players want to play, even if it's like niche. I don't know if you saw my tournament on Friday, like that was all about just gameplay gimmicks. That's my main goal in the game, to explore game mechanics and try and expand the skill sets of those two essentially. I think partially like being in the community, I get asked a lot for tournaments, so that feels kind of nice. Like my mapping is welcome and I also get to contribute to something actually complete competitive but otherwise it's just like I guess like the creative problem solving part of it I just very much enjoy and making maps true when are you going to rank event horizon <laughs> oh no I've tried to start like a dip like the next dip times have kind of flopped and kind of fell short it should hopefully be before the end of the year I think it's kind of the same thing that I get out of any creative output thing where you get to create something and assuming you're proud of what you create you can share it with people and see how people appreciate the things that you create and get input on your creation because people say like 
on YouTube, it's nice to get views and likes and all that. But what people really care about is like the comments. If you get comments, you get to see the human interaction between your video, your creation, and the person consuming the creation. That happens with mapping a lot. Maybe not necessarily with direct comments, but community conversation. And that's like something that I don't really get as much with YouTube. YouTube is more like the comment section is the consolidated discussion area. But for mapping, the broader mapping world is the discussion area. And I think that is a very interesting part of mapping and I enjoy it a lot. Playing my maps afterwards, not gonna lie, and then sharing it with other people. Uh, fundamentally, I, I still think that is the best reason to map. Being able to wake up, go, I have a stupid idea for a map, and then finish that map and then play it myself. That's the reason why I do art. I wanna wake up with a stupid idea and actually see it in action, you know? I think it's just when you are trying to do things that you like to do, instead of like you're trying to do things that are forced by other people or any other say objectives that you're trying to achieve obviously feel free to do so but to put it short if you're trying to map for someone else it's not going to be fun the only time mapping will be fun is when you make things to yourself yeah all right thank you oh the first question what makes a map good i said you get nominations and if you take it seriously I think your mapping career is not going to last long because one thing about mapping, very important, is don't listen and don't trust 100% of any people saying. What makes a map good? I think you should have your own answer. Yes. 